Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about a news item that happened several weeks ago, and now I'm just getting around to it. So, um, Pope Francis endorsed the German synodal path, according to the president of the German Bishops' Conference. Uh, this pre this uh, president is named Bishop Batzing, Bishop Georg Batzing, I believe. And... Um, so this was on June 24th. Bishop Batzing met with Pope Francis, and I'm going to just read some quotes here. He said that uh, Pope Francis has encouraged us to continue the synodal path we have chosen to discuss the questions openly and honestly and to come to recommendations for a change in the way the church operates. At the same time, uh, the Pope called for the church in Germany to help shape the path of synodality that he has proclaimed towards the Synod of Bishops in 2023. Uh, Bishop Batzing said that Pope Francis is well informed about the situation of the church in Germany, and the Pope hopes tensions can be overcome. Now, um, the bishop said he had informed po the Pope in detail about the synodal path and made it clear to Francis that rumors of the church in Germany wanting to embark on a special path were baseless. Yeah, he doesn't want them to embark on a special path because he wants the entire church to embark on the same path. So um, this is actually, this news is huge. I think it's even more significant than Pope Francis uh, endorsing Father James Martin because Father Martin is just a priest. Um, he doesn't have control over a diocese like this bishop does, and this bishop actually uh, is in charge of the German Bishops' Conference of, the, of an entire country. So I think this is extremely significant. And as I've said before, Pope Francis refuses to deny any of these rumors. Now, he can't now, since he had surgery, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but um, his support and his lack of denial of this support for the German Synodal Path, which, by the way, uh, the Germans directly contradicted the Vatican's directive on LMNOP blessings. Uh, a bunch of German priests, uh, encouraged by some of the bishops, blessed LMNOP couples in direct defiance. Like, that was their intention of blessing the couples was because the Vatican issued statements against it. And then they also had that uh, ceremony, the intercommunion ceremony with the Lutherans. And Pope Francis, um, he, he not only met with Bishop Batzing, but he said he made no public statement about uh, their direct, um, I don't, do I call it heresy at this point? Yeah, I think so. So, um, yeah, so this is even more significant, I think, than uh, Pope Francis encouraging Father James Martin and his LMNOP um, heresy. So, uh, and a lot of people, I don't know, people might disagree because uh, they might say, well, I, I think it has to do with the American perspective. Because when we're in this country, in the United States, you know, Father James Martin he could, we could drive to his parish. Uh, I don't know how long that would take for me to drive to uh, his home base in New York, but he might come to a parish or a diocese near you, and he might have spoken at one of the Jesuit centers near you, whereas um, Bishop Batzing in Germany is kind of far away, and we don't really, you know, in the United States, we don't pay as much attention to what goes on in different countries. But uh, this is this is the American perspective, but I think this is more significant. So anyway, Pope Francis, he, he did have surgery for his intestines, I believe, and I want to, I do want to uh, take a look at what Gloria TV has to say. Now this is rumors, and uh, the title is Pope Francis will not be the same anymore. He had a small surgery that lasted five hours, and it was, he, he was planned to be in the hospital for two days. Now it's extended to a week. He had a fever for a few days. And who really knows exactly what happened? I know that um, pneumonia is common if you're on a ventilator. Um, they're not common, but it can happen. And a fever would be a result of that. So uh, there could be a little bit of complications. Now, uh, what is it? They used anesthesia. And several centimeters of the colon were removed, which are tested for cancer. It's not, uh, okay. So he also, what would it be here? So, okay, there was a quote here from, I think, an Italian blog that said, Francis's illness is severe and degenerative and could be lasting. Francis will not be the same anymore and will live with many physical 
and psychological, physiological, sorry, as well as metabolic limitations. Well, so this might be the case, it might not, it's just a rumor. But it, it does raise several questions, um, and we need to pray for Pope Francis, I gotta say that, you gotta pray for him every day. Um, always pray for the Pope, and uh, maybe he will have a St. Paul moment, uh, he said recently that St. Paul was rigid, uh, maybe he will have his St. Paul moment, um, that's all I'll say on that, but certainly pray for him. Uh, but it, it kind of, it, it sort of leads up to my idea about Pope Pius XII. Now follow me on this. Um, Pope Pius XII was, at the end of his pontificate, I guess he suffered from severe stomach problems. And I think Ryan did a video, well, we, we had a, a thunder and lightning video where Ryan talked about Pope Pius XII being a modernist. And some of the excuses, I, I don't really, I'm not really familiar with the full situation, but, but some of the reasoning behind uh, people saying that Pope Pius XII, he, he did a lot of modernist things at the end of his pontificate was because he was pretty much out of action. He, he was basically like bedridden the whole time for the last several years of his life, and other people were running basically the Vatican. And uh, will this be the same with Pope Francis? Now this is too early to tell exactly what's going to happen, and you can't rely on the Vatican medical reports because they're not going to report anything. Uh, but um, is, is Pope Francis basically going to not run the Vatican? Um, is someone else going to run the Vatican while Pope Francis is recovering and possibly while he's uh, dealing with these medical issues that are going to pop up maybe a little more frequently? And um, I, think that's a, I think that's a legitimate question. And so if that's the case, then who will be running the Vatican? I think there's going to be a real power struggle because you have, and I, I think Brett the Fog, he was explaining this to me a little bit, you have uh, two corrupt parties, um, against each other. So there's the financial frauds versus the uh, moral frauds. So you have uh, you have um, Perilin, who, who basically, he was uh, the second most powerful person in the individual in the Vatican until Pope Francis sort of diminished his role based on the financial fraud. Um, <clears throat> so but then you have, like, the McCarrick crew, uh, and I don't know if they're all associated with McCarrick, but I know that they do, they have done similar things to McCarrick. Uh, yeah, if you, if you get what I'm saying, they're, they're the, uh, moral, what, what do I say, moral frauds? I don't know, morally corrupt. Uh, you have, so you have, like, three levels of corruption. You have financial, moral, and doctrinal, and I believe that, uh, the financial versus the moral, the morally corrupt, uh, both of them are doctrinally corrupt, but, uh, and I think the, the financial and the moral um, corruption bleed into each other too, but I, I think there's there's more prominent um, individuals who are <laughs> corrupt on either side. So um, we have Perlin, we have Cardinal Olette, who I, I don't think he really, uh, I think he was a Benedict guy, I think he was, he got his job under Benedict and he's just been there because he kind of he kind of says what he wants to say, or he, he kind of says what he needs to say to stay to stick around um, with Pope Francis. He did. He was in charge of the church where the Pachamama idols were located um, during the Amazon Synod, and he could have tossed them into the river, but uh, Taylor Marshall had to pay a guy to do that instead. Now, who else do we have? Togle. I don't know that Togle. I don't know that anyone really respects Cardinal Togle. I mean. To me, he just seems kind of goofy. That's really the best way to describe it. I don't feel like he's necessarily corrupt. Um, he doesn't seem like a corrupt individual, either financially or necessarily morally. Um, I don't know what his ideas are doctrinally, but I think he's into the environment and the Francis Church and that kind of stuff. And then uh, what about Turkson? I don't know that Turkson has a really powerful position. Or uh, Cardinal Stella. Or who's the guy? Ladaria? I think that's the Jesuit who was is the... Uh, in charge of this, is it the CDF? I'm not entirely sure, but it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if Pope Francis is consistently sick, someone else is going to be running the Vatican. They're going to be running the show at the Vatican, and um, this will be an opportunity for the financial frauds like Perlin to uh, do more things, like, with fraud, <laughs> you know? I mean, it, 
but th that's that's assuming that Francis uh, continues to suffer from this medical condition, which um, you know it, it certainly seems like it could be problematic. Uh, any kind of surgery like that, it does have a long recovery period, and you can make a full recovery. Uh, however, Francis is in his 80s. I think he's in his early 80s, like around 83. I'm thinking I could be wrong, but um, but that's that. It's gonna the older you get more difficult it is to recover from those types of medical conditions and uh, the more lingering the health effects are. So um, I think I, th I think that's pretty much all I have to say on that because, you know, we're seeing uh, the Vatican kind of go through changes, uh, you know, unexpectedly. Well, not, not expected for us. I don't know if the surgery was planned or if it was, you know, emergency surgery. Um, it seems as though it wouldn't have been pre-planned very far in advance. And at this point, it's just speculation. And there's going to continue to be speculation. Um, who's Who are the powerful cardinals who's running the Vatican? And who really knows? And I know that uh, Ed Penton, <laughs> he wrote a book, The Next Pope. And so he took a look at who the candidates were for the next pope. I found that very weird. Because it's basically like, all right, we're done with Francis. Let's try to move on. But uh, and I think that's the attitude of a lot of people. However, I th like. Do you think that Perlin would be a better pope than Francis? Uh, I, like, do you think that Togway would be a better pope than Francis? How, what about Turkson? Um, what about some of the Jesuits? I, I think is is Cardinal Ladaria a Jesuit? So, I. I don't know, and with this speculation, it's just, it's endless, because we don't have answers, we just have rumors, and uh, so I try not to talk a ton about rumors, I've talked a little, a lot about it right now, but uh, that's all I have, I see there's a decent number of people on the live stream, so I'm glad for you to join us today, or join me today, and um, I got stuff to do, so uh, thank you so much for watching, we are the laity, and we will not be silent.